Hi, it's Chris Duncan here, and welcome to the Conscious Education Podcast. This episode is about perception, identity, and more. Specifically, learning that the self-esteem movement has actually got it wrong. That you don't need to be positive, be motivated, be a certain way to achieve what you want, which I know sounds absolutely ridiculous, but just listen to the episode and understand this is success doesn't care if you're happy or sad uh, or, or motivated or not motivated or it doesn't care if you get up late uh, or wake up early. What success cares about is if you do the right things. That's what matters. And so many people have got this wrong and that's what I cover on this episode. What they miss is that you are positive because you have created you've created a life you love, or you've created something, and by creating that, you feel good. You don't need to feel good to create it. It's the horse before the cart. However, enjoy this episode. You'll really love it. Uh, today, I wanna to talk a little bit about the post that, uh, that I put in. So look, here, here's the post that I wrote in the group, okay? I said, uh, and, and I was quoting uh, Robert Fritz. The self-esteem movement is about one thing and one thing only, that's identity. And the theory is simple. If you don't think well of yourself, you don't deserve or you won't think you deserve success. You therefore would have to sabotage yourself and underachieve, thwart your best efforts and live a miserable life if you didn't have self-esteem. If you did have self-esteem, you would have, you'd bravely face obstacles and you, you'd take the risks, you'd be able to do everything you need to do. And so according to this self-esteem movement, all right, and this is a very big point, is that if you don't think good of yourself, uh, then you're not able to be successful. And, and what's true about this is that it's good to feel good about yourself, isn't it? Like that, that feels good. It feels good to feel good about yourself, but it's just not true when it comes to creating, okay? Some of the most successful people on the planet have low self-esteem. Think about Mariah Carey. She said, I have low self-esteem and I probably still do. David Bowie uh, had enormous self-image um, problems. Bob Dylan said, all I can do is be me. Whoever that, that is, uh, it's just, and, and, and that's what's so, so exciting about this is Einstein, Hemingway, Churchill, Roosevelt, Kennedy. The list goes on and on and on of people who haven't had to fix themselves in order to create success. Type in a yes if you agree with that. We don't have to fix ourselves in order to have success. But, but, then, but Chris, why are we here then? Well, what, what, shit, Chris, what are we doing here? You don't have to fix yourself. In fact, the idea or the premise of fixing yourself, it, it becomes a life mission rather than your life mission being to live life, you see. And so I posted, I'm so glad I think Carrie's on here, is I posted earlier, I said, you can solve all your problems in life and still not have what you love. You can solve all of your problems and still not have what you love. See, we've been brought up in a problem-solving reality. And the problem with that is that it isn't creative. Well, it is creative. It's just not creative for what you want. See, if you have a big problem, so... You're feeling, you're feeling a bit overweight or you haven't got enough money to pay the bills. Big problem. So that motivates big action. Yes, I had a big problem. I got, got this health scare. I got this financial problem. Can you guys see that? Let me move that. I'll just move my, uh, my light. It's shining way too bright, I think. Hopefully that's better. Is that better? Nearly. There we go. It's all about angles. So this big problem 
creates big action. However, big action solves the problem or starts to solve the problem. So what happens as the problem starts to get solved, the problem's what's created the action. So that creates less action. And what does that equal? Oh, guess what? The problem's back again. You see? Type in a yes if you get that. Type in a yes if you can see that structure. Holy crap, there's a big problem. Let's take some action. You see? So this, this problem-solving reality, it just can't work. Oh, there's a big problem. So we race to the action, which then reduces the problem. It reduces it. And because we always take the path of least resistance, we always we always are moving back. So what we, what we do in this instance is we create this huge amount of resistance. We say, right now sucks. So we race to something. And then as soon as we get there, another thing can happen. You see, if we have a current reality or an identity that says now is not good, that is the seed for the future reality. And so what happens is, is as soon as you get there, you end up going there and you bounce right back. You bounce right back. And that's what happens. You see an oscillating pattern. Now, why am I telling you this again? Why am I telling you this again? Chris, we've heard you say this, man. We, we pay attention, bro. We, we're watching it, man. Like we're, we're paying close attention. Why am I going back to the basics today? Why am I going back to the basics? We are so ingrained with the idea that we must fix ourselves that it is so hard for us to let go of. That's why. That's why. See, I want you to all write this down. Structure creates structure creates type that in the structure is going to create see if you're a super motivated person and you get yourself into a, a dead end job doesn't matter how positive you are how motivated you are how much meditation you do that structure of a job that's going nowhere you'll get nowhere that's the structure. You have to leave that structure to create something. True? Same in relationship, right? If the, uh, if the structure of the relationship is you're both there trying to fill each other up, you know, you're, you're both uh, incomplete trying to fill each other up. Doesn't matter how much work you do, the structure won't let you. Have you ever, have you ever seen uh, someone and you think, wow, man, they're having a really hard time. And so they disappear from the job and they bring in a new person. The new person starts off and it's like, wow, that person looks like they're gonna be amazing and good and awesome. And then guess what? They end up just being just as bad as the person before that. Has anyone seen repeating structures or patterns like this? What about in relationships? You see you know, a family member and they just keep seeming on falling in love with the same person in a different body. Has anyone seen that happen? Peter, didn't, you don't think this was a one-on-one, -on -one, Peter? <laughs> hey guys, it's cool if you change your uh, commenting to all panelists and attendees and then, then your jokes don't just go to me and I miss them. <laughs> yeah, so the, the structure is what creates, okay? And so, so structure what, what is what creates. So a structure that I haven't talked to you about is when there is a, a competing structure, okay? So in life, we, we always see energy flow along the path of least resistance. That is how I've got light. You can see me. Energy is seen. The least resistance is to flow down that wire. If you see a river flowing and you put concrete, a concrete block in the middle of it, the river will split and go around the concrete block. Okay. Same with us. There's no such thing as procrastination. There's just more resistance uh, in moving towards something and less resistance sitting on the couch eating Doritos. Okay. There is, we always, always, always move along the path of least resistance. And this is very, very true 
for all of us. So what happens if you have belief structures that create competing levels of resistance? Here, I'll give you a bit of an example because we're not just one structure. We're not just two, we're many. So I wanna give you a bit of an example to understand this. So if someone is hungry, if someone is hungry, can you see the structural tension? What's the structural tension with someone that is hungry? Well, there is less food inside of them than they would want, okay? So there's less food, they're hungry. So the path of least resistance is to do what? Well, resolve that tension, right? Resolve that tension, which, you know, looks a bit like going in and eating. So if someone's hungry, the tension resolution structure moves towards eating. Now, what happens is someone can have a competing structure going on. And that might be that they're overweight. Now, someone tell me, what is the tension structure when someone is overweight? What is the tension structure? Well, the, ten the tension structure that is, there is more weight on my body than I would desire. True? So what might be the action that resolves that tension is to go on a diet. Am I the only one that has got this competing or has ever had this competing uh, structure go on inside of them? How many of you have seen this at least somewhere else? Never, never happened to, to carry ever. So here's what can be really interesting. And this is where an oscillation pattern can, can happen. So we're hungry. So we eat. Eat creates overweight. Diet creates hungry. Now, <laughs> who can see this? See, there's, there's no true choice in this. There's no true choice. There's no true choice here. See, all of this is reactionary. Hungry, eat, eat creates this, this, or a bit of diet, this makes me hungry. And so this pattern will just keep happening. See, this structure here, it doesn't matter what you try to do inside of the structure with this person. The structure is always going to get them just moving towards some. They'll get a new diet, which will end up. This structure is a complete setup. So, so let me show it to you uh, in, a, in a different way. Okay. Someone has no money. So this is a structure. They have no money. Okay. You can see the tension. I've got no money. So they want to resolve that, that tension, right? So to resolve, resolve that tension, they, they're going to go in. What are they going to do? They're going to make money. That seems like, a, that seems like an obvious choice, doesn't it? So I've got no money. I'm in tension. So the, the tension of no money is, well, not enough is, is a better way of putting it, not enough. Not enough money has tension in it that I'd like to have more. So they, they take the path of least resistance, they go and make some money. However, they have a competing structure, okay? And the competing structure says, don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. It's bad to have more than others. So if you have a structure that says don't be selfish or it's bad to have more than others, when you go and make money, if someone says don't be selfish, 
you want to go and be self selfless. So check out this structure. They don't have enough money, so they go and make money. But if they make money, well, then they feel selfish. So then they've got to give it all away and then they have no money again. Give me a yes if you've seen this structure in someone before. Give me a yes if you've seen it. Not enough, so they make it. They feel selfish. Their belief says, don't be selfish. So they find a way to give it away and then they're back to not enough money again. Guys, I can show this again and again and again. You know, one that I see all the time, right, is uh, is hates hates their job. So if the tension is hates their job, they start a business. But then they also, so they hate a job, an obvious thing is to start a business. Hates their job, obvious thing, start a business. But they have a, a competing structure that, that says that they, um, that they must, uh, so how do, I, how do I word this in the right tension structure? Um, uh, no, no, no. Oh, that, that's it. So they, they don't want to work hard. They want to have a great lifestyle. So this person hates their job, so they start a business. But they also have a competing identity. Is the reason why they hate their job is they don't actually want to work really hard. They really want the lifestyle. So what happens is they hate their job, they start a business, they realize that they're working really hard. So then they go for more lifestyle stuff, and then they end up that they have to go back to something that they hate. Does this make sense, guys? Why, why am I showing you this? Why am I taking the time to do this? Why? Because structure is what is inside and is what we need to shift. You will always take the path of least resistance. And what I see consistently and what I saw in myself is that what was happening was I was just trying to battle against a structure that just wasn't working. It just, it's just not a working structure. I would try to fix it. I would try to fix myself. I would try to work on myself. I would do all of these things, but the structure could not resolve. What does that mean? The tension could not resolve. See, tension should resolve so that you have it, what you want and momentum should just be easy. Tension should turn into momentum. What stops us the most is we have competing, competing ideals, value sets, beliefs. We have competing values, ideals, judgments, all sorts going on. And so this is one of the hardest things for people to get their head around. But once you get your head around this, Creating is absolutely freaking easy. Kerry just typed in, so we've got to recode. So to change the tension, we must, we must let go of the parts of us that have design, are designed to keep us where we are. That's the answer, Carrie. We must let go or recode the parts of us that are designed to keep us where we are. Because once we let go, say, for example, this person here lets go of the need to. So if this person here somehow it doesn't have to worry, it's totally fine being called selfish. If this person, if this wasn't here, 
then they just go, I don't have money. I make money. Great. I've got lots of money. I've just got lots of money. See, I can see this. Watch this. Guys, who wants to play full out with me right now? Give me a yes if you do. Give me a yes if you want to play full out with me on this right now because I, I've got some stuff to share with you. How many of you would love to make more money? And be honest. You want to make more money. You want to make more money. What is it that you want to do with that money? What is it that you want to do with that money? Let me read through all of these. Retire husband from work, buy another house, have fun, spend it, buy a house, time, freedom, financial security, whatever I like, buy nice things, pay off mortgage, great lifestyle, save my mom. Nice, be there. Cool, look at all of that. Awesome. See, our true choice isn't the money. Most of us, most of us. When you have a true choice, you know exactly why you want the money, exactly what it's all about. When you have a true choice, you see, and when you have a true choice, it feels really good to make lots of money. It feels really, really good to make lots of it. You move towards it with ease is no problem. It's just easy to have. So here's the question I asked you to play full out. Who thinks their life will be better if they have more money? Who thinks their life will be better? To the degree that you believe your life will be better is the degree that you're collapsing it from ever happening. Because the more your identity thinks it's going to be better, the bigger your shift is into it's actually acceptable to who you are. Hmm. See, it won't be better. It won't be better. Nothing can be better than now. Now you can be as abundant as you like. And people always say this, you know, oh, Chris, well, that's, you know, good for you to say, man. You know, I saw on your Instagram last week that you made $120,000 in a day. You don't know what it's like. Chris, yeah, I do. This shift happens when you don't have it, is you must find the abundance. See, the only way that the structure resolves, okay, the only way that the structure resolves itself in the way that you want it to resolve is if you understand that you're here you desire to be here you have not enough and then here you have more than enough which is the literal definition of abundance 
And when you say here is, is, is now, this is now, this is um, future. You will get into the magnetic moment. You'll get into the magnetic moment when the now feels exactly the same as the future. This is when the tension just allows you to just go, oh, okay, I'll just have that now. Because it feels the same. When it feels the same. Yeah, Peter, one of our, uh, our coaches says, once the seed realizes its true nature, it simply is. See, once you realize that you are truly already completely abundant, well, then you just choose and have more money and it's done. And I know I can hear the annoyance at hearing this. Your ego is annoyed at hearing this, but it won't be different in the future. It will be exactly the same. That's why you must change it now. I'll, get, I'll, I'll let you know if you guys can, you guys can listen into a little bit of a story from me this week. So it's been about 31, 32 degrees Celsius every day here in Australia. So that's, uh, that's high 90s for everyone over in the United States, high 90s. And I was sitting out there, I've got a little beach down there by my pool. And uh, I, was, I was sitting down on the beach and I was having a cold glass of water. And, and in my water was ice cubes. And I love physics, I love, the, I love nature. So I pulled out one of the ice cubes and I was just marveling at the fact that uh, it was solid as ice and then became liquid and then evaporated back into nothingness. And I was like, wow, that's pretty much what we are. So I was having a spiritual moment with an ice cube. <laughs> that's, how, that's how my Monday mornings are sometimes. <laughs> So anyway, I'm having a spiritual moment with an ice cube. <laughs> and I realize, I realize just how abundant I am to have an ice cube on a 90 something or 30 something degree day. Even, even 80 years ago, an impossibility and impossibility a hundred years to go to sit in warm weather and have a cold drink, an impossibility. An impossibility. Think about that. There was no way that, a, that someone, didn't matter how much money that someone thought they had to have, they couldn't have the level of abundance that I had on that day. Give me a yes if you get that. Yet we give ourselves the excuse that we can't feel abundance, right? Yet the water that I have in my bathroom toilet bowl is absolutely amazing water. We find ways. We find ways to lie to ourselves that we can't have it now. Is it true? We, we find ways to lie to ourselves that we can't have it now. And this is the structure that I'm talking about. See, the structure is, is that you find it now so that you become it. The magnetic moment is because it's inside of what you already are. You become completely freaking magnetic when you are already it. This is because you're not trying to get away from something. You're not trying to problem solve. You're just making a true choice and you're already it. You're already it. You're already it. You don't have a competing structure because you already feel as exactly as you will feel when you have it. Anyone struggling with this concept? How am I doing by the way, guys? Are we all enjoying our, our session today?
I mean, this has to be the biggest problem in society right now. Is that we we just keep thinking that the next the next advancement in technology will finally reach it. You know, I'm I'm certain that in the the 1960s they said if we could have air conditioning in this car, man, it would be so enjoyable. And before that, they said if we just didn't have to use horse and carts, everything would be amazing. And before that, they said, you know, if we could just have a horse and cart. You have to be it, Samuel. You have to be it, man. You've got to be it now. You've got to be it now. But see, the thing is, is we think that there's a certain way to be it. We're told that we have to feel abundant to attract money. No, you just have to feel like it's okay to have lots of, lots of money. See, back to the original statement of self-esteem. A lot of the most successful people didn't have to didn't have to have self-esteem to manifest see so here's what's true is whatever you code up as your reality will be your reality if you think i've got to when i get money everything will be different your identity will sabotage that why will it sabotage that because you've spent 40 years being this identity it's you it's your safety i was doing a webinar the other day and a guy challenged me he's like well, why don't we just completely change our identity? Chris, why does it take 12 months? And I'm like, man, if you completely change every aspect about you, you would just turn into goo. You wouldn't know who you are anymore. You wouldn't, like, if you change every aspect of your identity in one minute, he said, why do we do a recode every week? Why wouldn't you just do it in one hour? Some sort of like macho dude. And I'm like, man, dude, if you got rid of every aspect of your identity, you literally wouldn't know who you are because your identity gives you orientation in life. Does this make sense everyone? It gives you orientation. So I'm not trying to beat up on it. I'm just letting you know that it's created what you have and the structure is creating it. And when we recode and step into a new reality, a new us, well, guess what? Everything shifts with it. Everything shifts with it and it will blow you away. It will blow you away. And I just can't wait to have more. By the way, who's had some amazing, amazing things turn up because of this work, right? You do this work, you shift into a new reality and amazing stuff shows up like completely amazing. It's completely amazing. And so, oh yeah, yeah, nice square, massive, lots. That's it. Already in a few days, right. So let's let's do some work on this. Let's do some work because it's... um. It's really, really, really important. So something I don't think that I've shared, and I shared this with Hannah um, today, is, you know, Hannah and I have some amazing chats, but uh, this one was led by me. Normally they're led by her. And this, uh, and I, I said, too many of us are focusing on ourselves. We're focusing on fixing ourselves. We're focusing on what we, ourselves, instead of focusing on what we're going after. Instead of focusing on what we're going after. And going after what you're going after is, is the point. That's the whole point here. The whole point is to go, go for what it is that you love, not problem solve, not fix, not spend a lifetime doing that, is to go after what you love. And I think Samuel sent me a message or, or commented on something. And, and I was like, well, action's what manifests. You know, you can have all the potential in the world, which we do, by the way. But action is what manifests. The seed doesn't become the tree, become the forest, unless someone plants it, waters it, something happens, whether that's the universe or, or something else. So uh, we must let go of fixing ourselves and we must tune in to what I want, right? Yeah, right on, Kerry. So, so the first thing we do, if you're new to this work, is we choose actively what it is we would like to create. Okay, we choose it. We say, this is what I would like to create. I would love to have it. Okay. And now we're choosing that. We're saying, you know what? That's what I want. Then we've got to make sure that we feel completely good about having that now and taking all the action in alignment with that. You see, taking all the action. That's why lenses is just so important. Doing your lenses each week going, okay, this is what, this is what I am. So what does this person do? Oh, they do this. They make phone calls. Oh, they do go on dates. They do this. They do this. They do this. 
and the action is what gets to there, right? The, the key understanding is remember that the seed is already the forest. The seed is already the forest. It just takes a bit of time for it to show up. So you, you, you can't go, hey, you know what? I transformed, I'm a seed of, of, this, of an abundant money forest. Where the fuck is it? <laughs> I've done the recode, I've meditated every day. God damn it, where is it? Because the person that's already it wouldn't be focused there. The person would be like, right, I know what I need to do. And so last little tidbit today, it's from my tennis coach. It's from my tennis coach. And um, yeah, right on, right on. My, my tennis coach today, uh, he, said to, he said to me, uh, and so by the way, I've got a really cool tennis coach. He's, um, he's an Australian champions coach. And uh, then he's lucky enough to coach me as well. And I'm like super beginner. And so anyway, he's coaching, coaching me. And, he, and I got annoyed at a shot, right? And, and I, I maybe missed it out by, by about this much. And, um, and he said to me, he goes, you can be playing absolutely amazing and you can miss all your shots by this much and you can lose. And he said, or you can be playing absolutely amazing and all your shots go in by this much. And he said, but really we're talking about the tiniest difference of the way that you had your racket, like tiny. And he said, if you get really happy when it goes in by this much and then really annoyed when it goes out by this much, he said, you're going to find yourself losing a lot. He said, you should feel exactly the same if it goes in by that much or out by that much. And he said, look, a good measurement is, is about a foot, a foot. And this is the guy coaching, you know, US, uh, so the, he, he coached Sam Stoza, who won the US Open, I believe. <laughs> As I said, that, that might not be right. But she won one of the major tennis tournaments, and he's a coach. And he said, when, when he talks with Federer and these top tennis players, is they don't get extremely happy when they get it in or when it just misses. They just are focused on absolutely being it. So they're not like, oh, I was it, and it just went in, yay, or it just went out. The only thing that matters is they stay in the intention of I'm playing a good shot and I'm going to win. And I'm sitting there on the side of the tennis court today getting a little bit sunburned, thinking to myself, man, that's, that's some profound stuff right there. That's life. Stay focused on the win. As so he said to me, stay focused on the win. Stay focused on what you want. And don't get happy or sad about how you're getting there. Just stay focused on the win. Don't get angry. Don't get, don't get happy. He says, just stay focused, stay in the zone. And then when you win, celebrate. And it was, it was so, so, so powerful today. And I was like, man, you're, you're awesome. He was so passionate about it. I literally thought to myself, man, you know, I should record this. It was so good. It was so good. And so that's what I want to share with all of you guys is that you do the right actions you know, and that's, you do the right actions, you're in the, you're in the end result of what you want, you're doing the right actions, and you're in that emotion, and then that's it, that's it, you leave that, you let it go, does that make sense, you let it go, you let it go, you stay in the emotion that you're a winner, you don't get excited if you make 20 grand in a day, you don't get pissed off if you lose 20 grand in a day, you're just in it, you're taking the right actions, you're just in it, because you're already it, and anyway, it was, um, it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful lesson from him.